Hello and welcome to Metroplex Family Church Online. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a joy to come in your living room or wherever you are as we do this broadcast together as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Today is a very special day and I am so thankful for us coming together and celebrating the great things that Jesus has done. I want to say a special thank you to Metroplex Family Church as we've come together these last couple of weeks with our production team, our worship team, and even in Kids Zone. Very special things have happened, and I'm so thankful for the quality of the broadcast and the production we've had. And I'm excited about the day coming up when we're all together and not doing this in the environment we're doing it in right now. However, We'll continue on, we'll be faithful, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness as we continue to reach out to one another as family and help the families of our community. Today is a special day as we honor the Lord Jesus Christ and the five things that He did for us, five powerful things that He did for us. And I realize as I say these statements that this is not just five statements that take care of everything. I mean, there is so much to the depth and the understanding and the revelation of what Jesus did for us. But however, number one is simply this. He was punished for our forgiveness so that we could be forgiven of any sin. Isn't that good news? I don't know about you, but when failure and sin happens in a person's life, there's powerful forgiveness in what Jesus did for you and I. His blood cleanses us from all sins. Number two, Jesus was made sin so that you and I would be the righteousness of God through Him. And that just is such a joy because we don't have to perform in our relationship with the Lord. It takes all the pressure off of what we do. It's all about what He did. And what He did is more than enough. Simply number three, Jesus was wounded for our healing and our health. I mean, it is so important in these days that we realize that by His stripes, by His wounds, by the price that He paid, we are redeemed from the curse of sin, sickness, and everything satanic. And that is good news today as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. He paid the price for everything in our lives. And then number four was simply this. Jesus was rejected so that we could be accepted. I don't know about you. When people reject you and people you know, disdain you, I've got good news for you. The Father God, through Jesus' love, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're never alone. You're never rejected. You're never isolated. And there's no social distancing with God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's good news, is it not? Well, it gets even better. Jesus defeated death. He defeated the grave. And He defeated hell completely. And we're going to talk about that in an even greater way. Listen to what it says here in Luke chapter number 24. Luke chapter 24. This is a powerful story. And of course, we're reliving it as it happened on this Resurrection Sunday. Luke chapter 24, notice what it says in beginning in verse 1. And I would encourage you also, if you've got your Bible, your iPad or iPhone, just take a couple of minutes to follow with me. Let's just get these scriptures inside of us over the next couple of minutes. And then we're going to have communion together. If you can get the elements and, and or whatever you can do to participate in our communion time in just a couple of minutes. Notice what it says in Luke 24 verse 1. It said, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, a, these a certain other women with him, they came to the tomb bringing spices that they had prepared. Notice verse number two. But when they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's good news, is it not? Notice what it says here in verse four. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, listen to this, why do you seek the living? Notice that among the dead. And notice verse number six. He is not here, but he is risen. And ladies and gentlemen, this is good news. Jesus is not dead. He's not in a grave. He's not in a tomb. He is risen. And because he's risen and he's alive, you and I are alive. I don't know about you. That excites me today and every day. Number two, the number second victory statement I want to share with you is simply this. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, listen to this or, or go with me right there wherever you are. 1 Corinthians 55, notice what it says here. 1 Corinthians 55, check this out. It says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Listen to this. Oh, hell, where is your victory? And that's then a question mark. And you know, that's the good news about the resurrection because death and hell have been defeated. It says in verse 56, listen to this. It says, The sting of death, of course, is sin and the curse of sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But this is what it says in verse 57. It says, Thanks be to God who's given us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
What a powerful and beautiful thing this is that we're sharing today from God's Word. Let it encourage you that Jesus is no longer in a tomb, thank God, and that hell and death itself has been defeated. Well, it gets even better. Listen to this. He is Lord of all. Let's go all the way to the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation says something here in Revelation 1.18. It talks about the power of what Jesus has done for us on this Resurrection Sunday. It says this in verse number 17. He says, I am the first and the last. That means he's the complete Savior. He is the completeness of everything you and I need. And listen to what it says in verse 18. He says, I am he who lives. I was dead. Listen to that. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and death. Isn't that good news? Jesus has the keys, the authority of everything that would try to harm or hurt you and I. I don't know about you. On this Resurrection Sunday, this is a cause for celebration. This is a cause of thanksgiving to what our Lord and Savior has done for us. But it gets even better. The Apostle Paul said something in Philippians chapter 3 that is the foundation of Metroplex Family Church and really is something that I founded the church I live my life by and I really is the foundation to who I am. It's Philippians chapter 3. He made this statement as you go over there with me. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, listen to this. He says in verse 10, that I may know him. Notice that phrase, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. To me, that's Christianity. It's not a religion. It's not rules. It's not regulations. Jesus didn't do these five things for you and I for rules or regulations. He did it for us because of a relationship. When I came to the Lord on October the 16th, 1983, it was all about a relationship. And all these years later, it's still about a relationship. Everything we do here at Metroplex Family Church is about relationship. And I'm so thankful over these last couple of weeks that even though we've had to use technology and social media and all the other platforms, we've been faithful, we've been diligent, and we've been consistent in reaching out to you and to others. And not only here locally, but doing work and supporting others not only nationally but even internationally because of this one thing. We're doing it so people can know him, not know about him. And notice what it says here, and the power of his resurrection. What does that mean, Pastor Brian, the power of his resurrection? Well, it's simply three things to me. And I'm going to take you through these three things quickly before we go to communion. And that is this, the power of his resurrection is not just for that day, even though it was as we celebrate the resurrection. It's for today. It's for right now. Whatever you're going through, and by by the way, we need the power of his resurrection as never before, cons considering what we're going through as a nation and what we're going through in the entire earth. But listen to what it says about this. There's an answer to this. There's good news to this in Hebrews chapter 2. Watch this. Let me turn over there. You turn over there with me and let's just look at it together. I want you to read out of your own Bible or iPhone or iPad because I'm telling you what, you need to read it and receive it because this is how faith is built on the inside of you. Listen to what it says here. This is Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 through 15. This is how Jesus has defeated past tense, our enemy, and we need to live in that resurrection power today. Notice this, Hebrews 2.14 says that through death, Jesus destroyed, isn't that good news? He destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And watch this in verse number 15, and released, past tense, all those who were in through their lifetime subject to the fear of death and the bondage thereof in it. Oh, that's good news, that we are not to be subject, we're not to be tormented by fear and the bondage of that because Jesus has dealt with that. He's released that. And I don't know about you, fear is running wild. It's running wild through our media. It's running wild through all kinds of platforms. But the good news of this, that what Jesus has done for us on this resurrection day, he said he's released us from the fear of death and all the bondage therein. And that is good news. Number two, another thing that Jesus has done for us on this resurrection Sunday, this resurrection life in us, he's commissioned us. He's He's authorized us to walk in these things. As it says in the book of Matthew, something very interesting, they call this in Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Sometimes it's been called the Great Omission. But notice what it says in Matthew 28, verse number 18. Jesus said, all authority, notice that all, A-L-L, -L, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you and know that I'm with you to the very end. That is good news, that we're to go in that name, in that authority, not in my power, not in your power, not in the church's power, but in His power, His authority, what He did for us 2,000 plus years ago. That's the resurrection life that you and I can live. And we can not only live in it, but we 
we can sustain ourselves to a place of victory in it. It gets even better. Let me share one last thing with you, and that's simply this. And by the way, over the next couple of weeks here at Metroplex Family Church, as we continue on, and by the way, I am hoping that this series I start on knowing the Holy Spirit, that we will soon be gathering together to experience the power corporately in this auditorium of us being together with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit in you and I right now. That is a beautiful part of what Jesus did through his resurrection, imparting the Holy Spirit to us. But it gets even better and more powerful when we're together corporately. Hey, let's, let's, let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Listen to this as I close with this and get those communion elements out. And uh, let's focus in on communion on this resurrection Sunday. Romans 8, 11. It says that the spirit of him, talking about the Holy Spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you and I. Watch this now. He who gives... He who raised Jesus from the dead will give life, notice that, to your mortal body through the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. As a believer, we have the Spirit of God, the very Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, living on the inside of us, quickening us, making us alive, as it says in one version. And I thank God for this beautiful gift on this Resurrection Sunday. The Holy Spirit, the authority, the commission to go forth in His name, and to know that the enemy has been defeated, past tense. You say, well, Pastor Brian, he doesn't look like he's defeated to me. He is defeated, and we're going to enforce his defeat, and we're going to live in this resurrection life, not because of what we do and who we are. Yes, there's a responsibility that we have. And I pray that you would commit yourself to give your life fully to the Lord and live for Him 100%, as we say here at Metroplex Family Church, that you would know Him in an intimate and personal way, not just know about Him, but to know Him individually and personally and to walk and live your life with Him and surrender your life to Him and don't let anything hinder you in your relationship with Him. That's what it's all about in walking through these powerful promises and these powerful things that Jesus has done for us on this Resurrection Sunday. Hey, listen, take that wafer or that loaf of bread or that cracker or whatever you have and let's just hold it up together and just simply do this. Break it or tear it in apart. Why is this? Because we're doing what Jesus said over here in 1 Corinthians. Or let's, as as a matter of fact, let's just look at 1 Corinthians as I close with this. And um, we do this in our communion services, but I want to continually encourage you about daily communion, continue practicing it. And let's just do what Jesus said here as we close. He said, take ye, this is my body that was broken for you, that his body was given for our bodies, not only for the redemption of our body, spirit, soul, and body, but the redeeming of our body so that the Holy Spirit, the very presence of God, would live inside of you. And then notice what he says here. He says, this cup is in the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often, verse 26 says, you eat this bread and you, per- and you drink this cup, you proclaim my death till I come. Well, I just want you to pause right now, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, and take these elements with me. And I just want to lead you in a prayer of the power of receiving this beautiful remembrance of what Jesus did for us, this resurrection life that he's given us through his body and his blood. Let me lead you in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body that was broken. We thank your blood that was given. And right now we receive it in your name with thanksgiving. Let's take and eat together. First of all, the bread. And now the cup. Just go ahead right now and thank Him and praise Him for who you are in Him and who He is in you. The good news of the resurrection is simply this. We belong to Him because of the great love that God had through Him to us. And I don't know about you, with all we're facing in the world, the good news of this Resurrection Sunday is simply this. God loves us through Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And we will not be defeated because we serve a risen Lord and Savior. And we are looking forward to celebrating even greater in the days ahead as we join together here at Metroplex Family Church and across the body of Christ, celebrating the greatness of our Lord and Savior. Look forward to seeing you soon in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us this Easter at Church Online. We hope that this message encouraged you and inspired you. Don't forget that you can give online at metroplexfamilychurch.com giving. From our family to yours, happy Resurrection Day.